Hi, everyone. This is the second Sunday of Advent in 2020, and uh, we're still at the orange level of risk um, related to the pandemic. And so um, we're not meeting together physically. I thought I'd just continue to post uh, another meditation based on scripture. And um, second week of Advent, sometimes the theme is peace. And uh, I thought today that I'd talk about the child of peace. Just remind us of scriptures. Child of peace. Um, two great passages from the Old Testament that I wanna focus on. The first is Micah 5. But as for you, Bethlehem Ephrathah, too little to be among the clans of Judah, from you one will go forth for me to be ruler in Israel. His goings forth are from long ago, from the days of eternity. Therefore, he will give them up until the time when she who is in labor has borne a child. Then the remainder of his brethren will return to the sons of Israel. And he will arise and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they will remain because at that time he will be great to the ends of the earth. This one will be our peace. So it seems to speak about the birth of a child who comes from Bethlehem, who will ultimately be our peace. And the other, the other passage is the very famous one from Isaiah chapter 9. And it starts in verse 1 by talking about the area around the Sea of Galilee where Jesus will end up spending most of his life. And then it says, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. Those who live in a dark land, the light will shine on them. You shall multiply the nation. You'll increase their gladness. They'll be glad in your presence as with the gladness of harvest, as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For you shall break the yoke of their burden and the staff on their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor as at the battle of Midian. For every boot of the booted warrior in the battle tumult and cloak rolled in blood will be for burning, fuel for the fire. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There'll be no end to the increase of his government or of peace on the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from then on and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this. Um, at this time of year, I love to remember that there are all these passages in the Old Testament that in a beautiful way foreshadow, foretell the coming of Jesus. And uh, it seems as though story after story is perfectly suited to get us ready. And sometimes there are these other passages which are even a little bit more direct that speak about a child who will somehow be our peace. Um, the child uh, who will be called wonderful counselor, eternal God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. And um, I don't really find other candidates in history that, that fit the bill as well as Jesus has done. And um, something about the, the promises, something about the way they were fulfilled in the life and the death and the resurrection of Jesus um, makes it possible for us to have uh, a flowing participation with God in all of life. And it's not that I don't think that others can have this too, but it seems that there's a wonderful gift that Jesus gives and, and focusing on him and loving him and, and taking on his mission as our own, trying to make justice wherever we go, um, seems to uh, allow his spirit to flow in and through us too. So here, here are two passages from, uh, from the New Testament. Jesus said, remember, come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So somehow, um, not only will this child bring peace to the world ultimately, um, but he also can bring peace to our hearts in the midst of whatever we're going through. And in John's gospel, Jesus says, these things I've spoken to you so that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation, but take courage, I've overcome the world. So there must be some way to access this peace, which Jesus promises. And St. Paul 
in Philippians 4 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And then I think he, just following on from this passage, gives a little, another clue. Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of good repute, if there's any excellence and if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. It's almost as though as we study the things that are truest and best, we become like them. And um, I remember that years ago, Brian Dirksen took this song, took this verse and wrote a song and just said, Jesus, you're true. Jesus, you're pure. Jesus, you're lovely. And, uh, you know, to study, to remember, to think about God being with us through this whole journey of history and, um, and, uh, and we can access this peace in our own lives in the midst of whatever ups and downs we're going through while we're on this journey to make a better world. And so the songs that I've picked for today are a little unusual for Advent season. They aren't Christmas carols. The first one is Peace Train by uh, Yusuf Islam, Cat Stevens, um, singing it from, from a long time ago when he was still Cat Stevens. And, uh, and, and the other is uh, Stevie Wonder, Heaven Help Us All. And so uh, we'll give you the links for those. And I think, they're, I think they'll add to the meditation. So I hope you have a great week. Bye now.